All right, welcome. It is Nazi from the Pulse of New Hampshire. It is time for Well Adjusted with my good friend, Dr. Sam. And of course, Dr. Sam established Infinite Health Family Chiropractic in order to help to, to create health and wellness for his community and to also educate individuals on the value of a chiropractic lifestyle. Let's bring him in right now. The one and only, the world famous yeah. Dr. Sam Ion. Hey. Here. And, and you know what, Dr. Sam, this is, you know, and, and, and I, I told you that I'm a huge um, supporter of, of chiropractic and, and the body heals itself. And we were just talking about this a moment ago. I woke up with a stiff neck and a stiff back. Yeah. And, and I really think it's because I've been under a lot of stress. I've been very stressed out the last couple of weeks. So, And that's, you know, that's a big one. You know, that's a big one because stress is an underlying factor. You know, there are, are hormonal factors, the cortisol levels, things that yeah. come up. And those are all inflammatory to the body. And, you know, that's, that's a huge factor because, you know, we talk about the show is well adjusted. Why? Because when those nerves are irritated, you know, you have, you have things going on um, in right. your body uh, that are more stressful. You know, it's back to school time. You know, uh, back to school, back to school time. What we're talking about now is how much stress is going on. Kids going back to school, you know, do yeah. they wear a mask? Do they not wear a mask? Do, right, know, right, 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 right. I got vaccinated. You know, do they have athletics? Do they not have athletics? So, you know, having having said that, you know, we, we moved our office into the heart of Concord at 126 Loudon Road. And we're at, you know, right where uh, D'Angelo's is. And the reason we did that is because we felt that we could better affect the community and yeah. have more more impact on letting people acknowledge um, their ability to heal, their ability to do the things that are within their body um, to heal. So we heal right. from the inside out. And, and regardless of, regardless of, you know, where, you know, right now, so what's a hot topic, obviously the vaccination issue is a hot topic um, with a lot of people. And what ends up happening is, you know, there's a lot of information put out by the media. There's a lot of information put out by people that are not the media. You know, there's the two fringe ends, but, you know, most of the people are in the middle trying to figure out where to go. And um, we talked a little bit about some of the inconsistencies. Um, I talked to a representative not naming names of the state a while ago, and uh, and she was mentioning to me, now she's going to school board meetings. Um, she's mm -hmm. a former representative. And she's going to school board meetings and, you know, talking about the mask issue with kids and how filthy they get. Um, yeah. And, yeah. You, know, you know, because how do you, you know, teach a kid to keep it clean, you know, and she made, you know, she made the statement that what's happening is people are not sitting down across and educating themselves and speaking to each other on a level of science as opposed to emotion. And, you know, rather than politicizing and making it a political thing, you know, if you think one way, you're a Republican. If you think another way, you're a libertarian. If you think another way, you're a Democrat. That has nothing to do with it. You know, this woman is a Democrat and she's a conservative Democrat, to say the least. And, you know, a few weeks back, you know, when we first started doing Well Adjusted, we had um, Dr. Jen on who was talking about the facts and the numbers. And right. then we had Dr. Dean um, come on, uh, I think it was the last time on the time before, and he talked about not so much a confrontational thing, but just about making sure that people are educated about their decisions about right. where their health is going. And right. Right. it's a concern, it's a concern for me because are those are those civil rights and you know are being trampled? Are people, you know, being asked to do things, do things that does not is not congruent with their thought process or congruent right, with what right. they and are they really endangering others? You know, so so um I had a I have a phlebotomist that comes in and you know standard protocol when a person goes into the hospital or gives blood is you know their standard protocol to say safe you know you do these things you know and she um she was saying that you know she she was vaccinated and you know obviously because of what she does and the exposure that she has she she felt that that was the right thing to do but ultimately she said to us um here in the office she goes she goes you know I can't ask people if they have a transmissible disease when they come through the come through the the um, the doors, the, you know, uh, they yeah. can't they can't they can't ask, hey, you have HIV. Do you do this? And I thought about that and I said, wow, you know, that's that's sort of the same thing what's going on now. They're asking people to release 
um, you know, under release health information, private health information, in order to be able to achieve or do something. And they're saying that it's protecting. And I, I, I have, you know, a logical person, if you're logical, okay, um, someone sits down, they looks at this, look at the science, and if they're educated, they make a, a decision that is good for them individually, right? So right. Where, where did that start? Okay, that started, I mean, it started many, many years ago. Um, you know, uh, Pfizer's, um, Pfizer's uh, vaccine, I apologize about that. Uh, 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 Pfizer's vaccine was just... Um, was just approved by the FDA and they approved it in four months. Okay. In four months. Okay. Um, it usually takes at least 10 on average to approve something. And, you know, it's, it's interesting to, to listen to people because vaccination is there. It's, it, it's to produce an immunity or produce a response to something. Okay. In our body. So, Regardless of whether you get a disease, whether it be COVID, HIV, whatever it may be, it's our body's ability to respond to that and right. to provide and produce the immune functions. So what do we do with the vaccination is we give millions, trillions, billions of cells into the body, billions, trillions of cells into the body and the body responds to it. It's not the vaccine that's doing the work. It's the body that's doing the work. OK, the, you know, so so those are the those are the things that we really, really have to look at. And a true immunization means that if you are immunized, that you mm -hmm. should not be worried about um, exposure to something because your body should be able to identify it and fight it. Right. Right. I right. Mean, people I mean, are people who have been people have been vaccinated are still coming down with COVID. They're still getting symptoms. They're That's still getting correct. They're getting some, and, and the yeah. argument is, are they getting lesser symptoms? Well, there was, there's really no true numbers on the number of asymptomatic people before the vaccines. There was mm -hmm. a lot of people that were asymptomatic and had COVID positive tests. So, yeah. so, the, so the thing is, so, so the thing is, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, misinterpretations or using the information in a, in a way that sometimes you have to question. And the objective behind this whole process that I'm talking about today is for people to open up the dialogue without getting angry. You know, I mean, the, the thing is, you may not agree with, with what I'm saying, and that's okay. But right. the original word vaccination actually came from, and I'll leave this to people to look up because they actually came from the word vaca, which means cow. Okay. Because um, Edward Jenner, who the so-called so father of vaccinations, found that, um, that milkmaids that were um, exposed to cowpox um, were not as likely to get smallpox, or this was his observation at least. So he deduced that he could take the pustule, um, the, the pus or the pustules from the cowpox, inject it into somebody, and they would be resistant to smallpox. So that's the wor way vaccination came about. Now that's, right. you know, that's, I mean, that's, and obviously I'm, I'm shortening it for this. Right. You yeah. know, I'm shortening. There's a lot more to it than, than right. that. But ultimately, you know, you look at you look at the processes that um, that we look at, and you know, this is an unprecedented vaccine. It's a novel virus. Okay, if you look at the you know the, the you know the past novel viruses or unprecedented vaccine research, it took somewhere in the vicinity of about twelve and a half years, twelve and a half years to certify that that unprecedented vaccine was was valid um and it you know and was predicted and they predicted that there was only a two percent probability that there was a success in stage or phase three of clinical studies and things in that nature mm -hmm. so this mm -hmm. was a study done by young uh by young in 2018 at, at al which means with other people you know and he found that you know 12 and a half years and here we are speeding through a process of um, we're speeding through a process of giving people something and initially it was a, now it's not considered emergency use because Pfizer has been approved but it was right. considered you know it was considered emergency use and you know and um Doshi um uh, from from uh, British Mer medical journal um, printed something first. He did it in a blog. He did it in their British Medical Journal blog, 
and and he was um you know there was a lot of a lot of questions as to um what was excluded what was not excluded the mm -hmm. things that were that were there you know like he said he says here so um, a central aspect of Doshi's critique of the preliminary efficacy data ex is the exclusion of over 3,400 suspected COVID-19 cases that were not included in the interim analysis of the Pfizer vaccine data submitted to the FDA. So this is, okay, so this is facts. This is not, I'm saying I'm anti-vax or I'm vax. This is just information that people, you know, people are not aware of. Um, and that need to uh, need to know. And there are four questions that we need to ask ourselves when we we are pushing these things through. OK, because ultimately. The the biggest thing is, will the vaccine stimulate the immune response? OK, mm -hmm. well, you can stimulate an immune response to almost anything just by giving an adjuvant to somebody or giving which is like, a, a, a you know, you're exposed to aluminum or exposed to um, exposed to lead. I mean, your body is going to respond by inflaming or or so. So the thing is, but is it stimulating the immune response specifically? Will right. vaccines provide a sustainable immune endurance? So now what we're finding is, um, you know, like you had mentioned earlier, the one study, there was one one area in Massachusetts, particularly that I had read about, and there's yeah. several other studies that Down the Cape. yeah, you know, like 76% of the people were mm -hmm. that, that that were reinfected um, already had already had the vaccine. Yeah. So you know the, sure. the the next question that you ask then is how will the COVID two mutate? How will the SARS COVID two virus mutate? So when we give an injection, we're bypassing the natural immune um, uh, defenses of the body, right? Mm -hmm. We're going yeah. right into the muscle. We're going intramuscular. We're going into the muscle and the body's responding at a bloodborne level um, and through the muscles with inflammation. And people do, you know, that some of the side effects are inflammation, lethargy, uh, fatigue, you know, some of those things. Um, but we're bypassing the skin and we're bypassing the mucous membranes. And those, those defense mechanisms are very important because if we want to identify, if we want to identify in our body what's coming into our body, that's mm -hmm. the first line of defense. So, yeah. you know, you know, putting the mask on, our body's never exposed to it. And yes, this is a respiratory, this is a respiratory, um, a, a respiratory, it's actually expelled in the mist in the air. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of things that are still unknown about this virus. Right. There are right. Lot, yeah. You know, so there are a lot of things that are still unknown. I mean, and having had COVID, OK, in December, um, you know, I went to the hospital for one night. Um, I, you know, I encourage people that if they have any sort of symptoms or they feel like that they, or they've been diagnosed with COVID to keep track of their pulse ox, get a little pulse ox, a good uh, pulse oximeter, which measure, measures oxygen saturation, mm -hmm. because yep. that's a good indicator if your chest isn't functioning. <clears throat> and that's an important aspect to it because, you know, throughout the week, I didn't have any symptoms. I had a very low grade fever. I didn't feel miserable. I was getting on my bicycle five, 10 minutes a night to avoid any sort of pneumonia or anything like that. And then I woke up on a Friday morning, a week into it, and I had a pulse, you know, my oximetry reading was an 80. Okay, which is not normal. I mean, you can no, have you no. know, kidney function. Yeah. Oh, huge. You should have yeah. somewhere 95, 98, you know. Somewhere right. Like and so I went to the hospital and they gave me oxygen. By that afternoon, my oxygen levels were through the roof, but they kept me overnight. And the next day, the doctor asked me, what are you doing here? And I truly <laughs> believe that, you know, I truly believe that that the things that I've done in prior to that helped my immune function fight these things. So many of the people that are exposed to it naturally and don't have vaccine, there are risk factors that you have to take into consideration. Right. But many of these people have some sort of co, um, uh, you know, cohort, uh, comorbidity or co, co type of, uh, uh, you know, co type of thing going on, like diabetes, overweight. And I was extremely right. overweight at that time. I yeah. was about two seventy five, two eighty. I'm, I lost about fifty pounds, knowing that wow. hey, I got to do something to yep. change, you know, change my health, and then. Are we prepared in case the back vaccine backfires? Those are the four questions. Will they stimulate immune response? Will vaccines provide sustainable immune endurance? How mm -hmm. will the SARS-V2 um, mutate? And are we prepared for, for, the, um, for those? And, you know, with lack of, you know, a lot of clinical trials and standard trials and rushing this too, what they did was they needed pertinent physiological and epidemiological, which means 
you know, information from a lot of people right. in order to data, data generate data generate. So what yep. did they do? Emergency use authorization. And I mean, it became a large, it became a large cohort of people that they can now look at um, and say, mm -hmm. okay, this is how it works. And this is a, but you know, that's experimental. You know, right. that's, I mean, you know, you go back, you go back as far as, uh, you go back as far as the Nuremberg Code, which was put in for absolutely a specific thing. And, I, you know, to compare it to that would be horrific. But just right, understanding, right. just understanding that in that code, it says you cannot give something to somebody if it's experimental against their will. And what's happening is a lot of people are not told the other half of it. And if if they're deciding that they want to wait for the results, like I have I have someone whose son is a pharmacist and refuses to give it to his children and to himself. Oh, he's a pharmacist. This is not an uneducated man. OK, this is someone who knows the actions and the reactions of chemistry. I met a chemistry, um, uh, a chemistry uh teacher um when i was out and it was interesting because you know i go out and what do i talk about i talk about chiropractic and immune function and health and right. he said that you know his job was to his job was to find the chemistry change the constituents but mimic nature and he voiced his concern about us destroying the um destroying the the rainforests and for deforestation and things of that nature because he said the amount of chemicals um that are produced that are produced and that haven't even been researched and could possibly help people are out there and you yeah. know i've read that about other things too that's so very true there's so many things in nature that are untapped uh, yeah. as of yet you know, yeah. yeah, you know, and, 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 you know, the thing is, you know, for the Johnson and Johnson, you know, Johnson and Johnson and AstraZeneca vaccine, they're using actually hu human embryonic kidney or fetal retinal cell lines as, um, as, as things to um, produce their, their, their vaccines and the, the, the factors that are going in and to hold them. But this new technology um, it, it, that they're using with the mRNA, which everybody knows now, okay, it's a, it's a biological um, uh, reaction in the body um, due to some sort of messenger RNA going in. And they had the biggest problem was keeping it um, patent. Um, but the, the thing is this form of mRNA Delivered in the vaccine is never seen in, in nature ever. Hmm. Ever. So hmm. so the thing is, if it's not seen in nature, are we speeding up the mutation of the virus? By doing, it's not the, by doing that. You know, it's a question that has to begs to be asked. Right. You know, and this is why when I talk about the people like, oh my God, he's an anti-vaxxer or he's this. No, no, I want no. conversation. Explain yeah. to me. Let me know what's going on. Give me the research. Yeah. Let me understand. Until then, I'm going to trust my body to do what it's done, and it did. I mean, it. You know, and and you know what? I knew my limitations and went to the hospital for a day. Go ahead. And you did. And what I wanted to say is, you're not an anti-vaxer. You're a pro-information person. Yes. You 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 need the facts. You your science. Um, and and that's what I love about you. And we've got about a minute left, and and I just want to put two things out there to kind of add to what you're saying. Number one. Know your source, okay? Yes. And and what what Dr. Sam is preaching right now, get the information, do your homework, do the research. If you want to find, don't don't be influenced by what other people believe. Be influenced by fact is what right. Dr. Sam is saying and right now. Find out where that information is coming from. Yep. It's unbiased, okay, and yep. it's it's true to the fact. Yep. And then the second thing is, no matter what your beliefs are, no matter if you believe this, you believe that. I believe we can all still be friends. You know yes. what I mean? That's that's really what it's all about. It's just right. no matter what your beliefs are. And that's why I don't share my beliefs with people because I don't want to get into confrontation with anybody. That's you know? Right. But we're uh, being forced right now and yep. the segregation is happening. And that's my concern because civil Mine too. are being trampled. Yep. Mine and, too. You know, and that's and that's the thing. I yep. all I want to do is finish up with if people want to get in touch and learn, they can go to our website, they can go to we have a bunch yep. of workshops online. Um, yep. Our phone number is 753-4455. Our website is uh, infinitehealth.biz, B-I-Z. Yep. Um, and, you know, we're going to have a, a back to school special going on. So people call in and they say, hey, I heard you on TPL. And, you know, we heard about the back to school special. What's that about? 
um, they can call in and we'll give them a special rate for their exam. Um, it will be 47 for the whole exam with x-rays if necessary. So, I love it. yeah. I love you know, it. So, so the thing, the, the big thing here is ask questions, ask don't the questions, judge others, don't yep. judge others, find out the information. And if you're vaccinated and you feel like wearing a mask, believe in those things to protect you because that's why you got them done. That's because it. Because if you're exposed to somebody else and you're doing those things to protect yourself, don't do it to, you know, you're saying you're doing it to protect others. You're doing it yeah. to protect yourself. Protect and yourself. You know we, gotta, we gotta wrap it up right there. We're, we went a little over time, but Dr. Sam, thank you very much. And you can get in touch with them, infinitehealth.biz, 603-753-4455. Thank you, Dr. Sam. Thanks, thanks, Nazi.